Okay, recording is underway. For the record, Ashley Jepson, I'm the Plant Health and Compliance Division Administrator with the Nevada Department of Agriculture. And thank you for joining us today for a workshop on Nevada Administrative Code 587. Um, this also is a document that's filed with LCB, but we've since made changes. So I just wanna advise on that. And that document is R099-20. Um, depending on how this workshop goes, we will route to LCB to update our changes um, accordingly. So with that, um, I wanna take a moment for our, um, our Department of Agriculture staff to introduce themselves. We have quite a list here. Um, and then we'll go a little bit of the logistics and expectations throughout the workshop and our scheduling and so forth. So if our team will start jumping in and introduce themselves, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Good morning, this is Megan Brown. I'm the deputy administrator for the plant health and compliance division within the Department of Agriculture. Good morning, this is Russell Willem. I'm the seed program manager under the division of plant health and compliance for the Department of Ag. And we have Alan, he's got, he doesn't have a mic, but Alan Whitenack, he's our administrative assistant with our plant division as well. And he's on here um, recording as well. Alexa, you're not coming through. For the sake of time, I'll go ahead and introduce you, Alexa. She's in that top, uh, well, for me anyway, she's got the crops picture behind her. Um, she is our crops program coordinator for the plant health and compliance division. Other folks might be having, I know Cheryl Honeywell was having some technical difficulties as well. Um, she oversees our export program um, and she is also with our plant health and compliance division. And then Sierra Russell, she is our um, program officer too for the Department of Agriculture. I'm making sure I capture everybody on our list here for Department of Ag employees. And I think we did. Okay. Well, just so you're aware of kind of the, the folks and, and experts that are on the call, I wanted to take some time for introduction. So um, as we get into the public comment section, which will be available um, at the start of this meeting and at the conclusion, please be sure to state your name for the record and keep comments to three minutes. That would be wonderful. Um, so what we will do is we will open it up to public comment and then we will go through the actual proposed changes. I'll share my screen with the document and we'll be able to have um, a discussion there and then also conclude with public comment. Um, we do appreciate all, excuse me, I meant to say the date and time is uh, October 26, 2021. I believe we started the meeting at 10.02. Um, so we'll, we'll, as I mentioned, we'll open it up with public comments, state your name for the record, then we'll go into the content of the changes. Um, as you've seen, the changes are available on our website. Um, actually, Alan, if you're available to, if you could share the link in the chat, that would be great for anybody that wants to have it directly. Um, but it's on our website, you can click on, on the plant division and it's right next to meetings and workshops. And that's where we post the small business impact. It's where we post um, the proposed language changes, the agenda, and then also um, our small business impact assessment report. Um, so there's quite a few documents there that, that will help you um, see the process. Um, we, we did issue to try to assess potential impact to small businesses. A survey went out, it was um, issued fairly broadly to industry and we got some really great feedback. We've already had some wonderful discussions with our nursery program folks um, and gotten some good feedback on how to be effective with some of these executed changes. Um, so before we jump into public comment, I just wanna mention um, most of the proposed changes are really to get our um, fee schedule up to allowing us to cover our administrative costs. Um, these programs are incredibly time intensive. Um, there's usually federal expectations on, on how we execute some of our inspection programs and that requires a number of different um, activities. So um, a couple of our programs in particular, our export program has been running in the red for several years. So it's reached a point 
to be able to continue to offer, we need to make sure that our fees are covering those costs. We do try to be as efficient as possible. We have staff cross trained in many different inspection services and out in the field in areas um, where they can overlap as much as possible to save industry money to be most reasonable with our staff time um, and to try to be flexible there. So we'll continue to do that. That's still our, our program structuring. Um, but again, we needed to update these to to cover costs. So with that, let's go ahead and open it to our first agenda item, which is public comment. Um, so a couple housekeeping items, you can actually raise your hand. Um, if you scroll underneath your name, you will have an option there to raise your hand and I'll, I'll select you. The other option is you can turn on your camera, wave me down. That's great too. Um, if you're having any technical issues, your microphone's not working, please submit us written comment. Um, you can send it to Alan Whiteneck and we will absolutely take that into consideration um, throughout the workshop and throughout the administrative rulemaking process. So don't, don't hesitate on that. Uh, if you're on the phone, which I don't think anybody is, um, I believe it's star six to unmute yourself. Um, we just ask that you be respectful of other folks as they're, um, as they're speaking. Um, and again, there'll be opportunity after we go over the content as well, if you wanna speak at that point in time. So with that, um, is there any public comment that folks would like to start out with? Floor is yours. It's pretty quiet. Um, so I think uh, for, again, for sake of time, we'll go ahead and jump into um, the bulk of the changes, we usually have it pretty quiet at that initial public comment phase, but you'll have um, further opportunity. So let's jump into the changes. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, so bear with me for a moment. How's that coming through? Great. I like thumbs up. Those are good. Okay back up here. Okay, I apologize. This doesn't have um, the LCB file number R099-20. That was my error. Um, but again, uh, there are changes in this document that you would not be able to see through the current list on LCB's, uh, excuse me, Legislative Council Bureau's website. Um, so just a little um, background on typically how that process goes. The um, department can draft changes, try to go through the workshop phase to see what public comment we get to see how much we need to change the language and then route to LCB to put together, you know, the legal language and ensure everything's in place. Um, we're able to do that at the workshop phase, but before we go to hearing, we would absolutely need to have the LCB document finalized and approved. So just for those of you that may not know that process, wanted to give you a little update. So let's get into it. Um, so we do have some legislative digest that really is going over the meat of the regulation uh, or the fee changes that we're adopting, but I'm actually going to go into that portion of the proposed regulation that highlights the changes. So anything that you see red strike through is a proposed removal from current Nevada Administrative Code 587 and then blue bold are proposed additions. So this first portion in adding or in modifying um, the fee to $3,000. So this pertains to um, if the fees throughout the shipping point would exceed with one company um, $3,000, they would actually need to have a surety bond. And being that we're increasing the fees, we felt we also needed to increase from 2,000 to 3,000 so that folks aren't still having to go get um, surety bonds for $2,000 level. So we felt that that was a better, um, that would be a better fit for industry, which is why we increased that amount. Okay, our next one here, and you're gonna see this kind of across the board. Um, so let's see, section one, subsection two here, we're increasing um, our hourly rate for inspection um, pertaining to grading and certification to $60. Now, this is the, the rate that we're trying to do across, um, across the plant division. Um, you've seen it if you've been in other workshops pertaining to our hemp 
program, um, that's the rate that we increased it to as well. So we're trying to be fairly consistent and that seems to be the best fit for our, our staff supply and travel costs as well. Um, we did do an assessment of what other states are charging and this really was in a, it was still lower than most, um, but it certainly um, was kind of was in the middle in some in some areas as well. So it wasn't far out of reach compared to what other states were. 40 was certainly um, very low compared to most states. And again, this pertained to inspection, grading, and certification. And more of that we'll get into those costs throughout this document. Okay, and then moving into subsection three here, increasing from $50 to $60 for the inspection and forage um, for the presence of noxious weeds. So this is pertaining to our weed free certification program. Um, so this is a voluntary program, and again, to cover our our administrative costs increasing to that $60. Um, here in subpart five, um, for inspections, for phytosanitary certificate inspections that require um, inspection of a fairly large, of acreage, so to speak, we're um, proposing to increase the uh, fee from seven to $10. Um, for our certificate, so here in subsection six, um, we issue a number of certificates across the department, and this includes phytosanitary certificates, free sale, certificates of origin, ex and um, among other export certificates. Um, currently, the rate's been $25, and that has certainly not been covering costs. There's um, a lot of back and forth that comes with drafting these documents between getting an application, going back and confirming information, drafting, redrafting, um, and this area, this particular area has not been covering costs. So $40 um, is what we're proposing the change to. And again, this is fairly consistent to what we're seeing um, with other states as well. Um, and we feel will allow us to, to better cover. You'll see later in the document that is the same increase that we're proposing for issuing our federal phytosanitary certificates as well. Um, and to give context, I guess I should go a little bit more into that. Most of these certificates, they're, they're going to be required um, for somebody to be able to export their products. Um, so there is a lot of back and forth. They are very official documents, and that's... Um, another particular reason that they're they're closely monitored and there's a lot of um, time commitment with our staff on those. And as I mentioned here, excuse me, I didn't mention what section we're in here. Back, we're in section two, subsection three. As I mentioned before, we're increasing um, our federal phytosanitary certificates as well to that $40 um, per certificate fee um, to reflect what we had for our other certificate increases as well. Fee for certification and refund. For, for each planting, the department will charge and collect a certification fee of $35 per acre, a minimum charge of $40 per application. So we're increasing from $25 to $35 here for fee for certification. Okay, so now we're getting into fees for analysis and testing. Um, so this pertains to our seed program, our seed certification program. Um, so as I scroll down here, you're gonna see quite a few changes added. So what this change pertains to is for those selling um, seed on a retail and a wholesale level, um, they'll be required to pay an annual fee of $75 for retailers, $750 for wholesalers of seed. Um, and the intent here is to allow our staff to do the lab analysis to confirm germination purity and noxious weed contaminations um, that could be present within those seeds. Um, we did get a lot of feedback through our small business impact on, on this addition. So we did do some extra legwork by we, I mean, Russell Wilhelm, our seed program coordinator. Um, he did find uh, a great study that was done by North Dakota. Correct me if it's South, but I'm fairly certain it's North. Okay. 
Um, it was done in 2019 and they were actually assessing their seed registration program. They took a number of samples and found that 11% of those, I think it was out of roughly a thousand samples, I believe so roughly, um, but 11% they had non-compliance issues and that contained noxious weeds, purity issues. So definitely um, issues on a state level for a source for bringing in noxious weeds, invasive species, um, and you know consumer um, quality issues. So that's something we're trying to step in, um, take samples of seeds and see what we're actually seeing on what's happening at these retail and wholesale levels um, and provide nurseries with information on what we're finding um, so they're able to make you know, decisions based on what they're seeing with certain companies and certain seed. Um, and also allowing us to pull things lots from the shelf that are of concern and to trace it back to the source. Um, so we do feel this will be a great service for consumers and our general industry with um, being aware of what's happening and being able to make um, informed decisions. So our, our plan here, um, we, we did engage with our nursery industry a little bit on how best to execute and again, um, the intent there would be to share the reports of analyses that we're getting, what the seed was, what was taken, what was the name brand, to share that information with our nurseries um, and, and to try to time it and be strategic with how we're taking those samples, whether it's um, certain brands every year, if it's higher risk or we're seeing trends with certain species, um, but to share that information throughout the process. So um, how it would happen is we would have this fee included as part of our nursery renewal process. So it's a little bit easier. You're not having to do two different renewals throughout the year for those nursery specific, which are our common um, retailers. And then um, let's see, and that would be by July 1 of each year. So that's why we put that deadline. Um, it tends to correspond with our nursery timing. Um, so, with that, we did have to define a wholesaler and a retailer to make it clear, and there are exemptions here. Um, the fee is not required if an individual is selling only seeds produced by the individual or if the individual is selling flour or vegetable seeds at retail package weighing not more than one half pounds that are prepared for retail seed by a seed company licensed under NAC 587. So, if they're licensed in another form in NAC 587, we don't want to duplicate those efforts. Um, and the other exception is if an individual's gross annual income is less than $500, it would also not have to, um, to go to have the samples taken to, um, and analyzed. Um, Russ, is there anything else you wanted to add to that? You don't, you certainly don't have to. No, actually, I think you, you covered that very well. You made my job easy. Well, I try. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, that concludes our, um. Proposed regulation changes. So give me just a moment to stop sharing my screen here. We will open it back up to public comment. Okay, I think screen is unshared. So now is your opportunity as well, um, folks, to, to make any comments. If there's anything, again, you want to provide in writing, we certainly welcome you to, to email anything. Um, so I will open it up for public comment. Again, you can raise your hand, use the hand icon, um, or you can wave me down with the camera or star six to unmute yourself if you're on the phone. It's pretty quiet. Um, there's a lot of changes in this one and, and fee changes in that. So. I think uh, it definitely helped our small business impact. We did get a lot of feedback through that. Um, so I'll, I'll work with our team to assess whether we're gonna do another workshop or route this to LCB and potentially go to hearing. We didn't have a ton of public participation um, in this workshop, which makes me hesitant to move forward without another workshop, but I know we did try to push this out um, through a num number of channels um, and it was pushed out several times. So. Um, but I want to make sure we're getting as much public comment and feedback as we can. Um, so we'll see, you'll definitely, um, if you're on the contact list already, hopefully you are, otherwise it's on our social media. All these things will be posted there. If we hold another um, workshop or if we move forward with hearing, um, so you'll have some opportunities there. 
it's still pretty quiet. Um, Ashley, I put Alan's contact information, well, his email in the chat too. So if somebody doesn't have his contact information, that's a, who you would submit any written comment that you have after um, today or from today's meeting. Great, thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Well, I won't, I won't keep you if uh, there's not any more discussion. I know everybody's busy, so I do thank you for taking the time. Um, and we appreciate your feedback. So thank you. And with that, we will conclude our workshop for NAC 587 pertaining to R099-20. It is 1023 on October 26, 2021. Thanks everyone. Have a great Tuesday. Take care.